When we're out climbing our e-bikes in the mountains, we're very fortunate that if we need a sudden boost in power, all it takes is a quick hit on that button on our handlebars. When you get home, you make that cup of tea, you just flick that switch, instant power is delivered to your house. But have you ever considered that when you want to charge your e-bike on the weekend, that's gonna put a huge amount of stress on some people. And in the UK, that's the national grid. So today we're gonna to ride the mountain that makes electricity. So North Wales is home to a load of sheep, some amazing landscapes, and some really clever people too. People that can provide your e-bike with power in the flick of a switch. So this place, or rather that place down there, was built to deal with sudden surges of demand and power. And unlike other power stations which take a long time to come on tap, Dunorwick takes about 10 seconds to go from zero to 1800 megawatts of power. That's the kind of power the country the size of Wales needs. Hey Chris, do you want to see where it all begins? Mm, no, not really. You can head off down the visitor centre. I'm off up there to go and check out North Wales' finest rampage locations. Look at all those lines. <laughs> Come on. Okay, Mr. Freerider, why don't we begin here? This looks a bit tasty. It does look cool, doesn't it? Imagine a big manual down here. You got that? <laughs> going up there would be hard <laughs> enough. Oh yeah, I think going up would be cool. Yeah. Can we make it? That's four inclines. Four inclines, they oh there's seem, massive ones They too. seem to get progressively steeper as you go up the mountain. Yeah, yeah. This looks pretty chill. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore that does. Let's get into it. The slate vein in Dinorwick is nearly vertical and lies near the surface of the mountain, but the 45 degree inclines were more than steep and narrow enough for us. It's a long way up here, isn't it? The incline served to transport slate by tram to different levels and the faces known as galleries. We set about tackling the vast and angular incline network of a mountain that has given and taken so much. During the era of quarrying, each of the galleries had their own names. Adelaide, Bright, Bring Glass, Brintlis, Victoria and Wellington. Slowly through the day we worked through all of them, each producing their own challenges. Hey Chris, before we start talking electricity and power, this place, it's the former Dinorok Slate Quarry, is a massive part of the local economy from like 18th century for about 100 years. Yeah. It's actually one of the biggest quarries in the world. It's probably about 3,000 people. Uh, enough of the history lesson, Jones. Uh, you seen those steps down there? Check them out. I thought you were gonna ask me like how it worked or something like that. No, just like loads of, look at all these lines, you're just gabbering on yeah. and I'm looking at all these lines. Look at hey, but listen, these are the galleries, right? Yeah. This, is where, this is where it all began. This is where the slate was blasted out of the hill by gunpowder and there were men hanging by ropes for their lives, crowbarring the rock off those cliffs and then be transported down the mountain on yeah. tramways to those little sheds over there where it'd be split and dressed. This is like a pretty epic place. Anyway, should we get riding? It soon became clear that it was going to be a day of riding challenges rather than a discussion of where the past and present collided. Even the wild Welsh goats were disagreeing. The first use of railways at the quarry came around 1800 when the first internal tramways were in use. These first lines were worked using horse and hand power. For the next 70 years, the tramway system grew until it reached the point where more powerful traction was required. Harriet, Padern, Dinorwick, Lisa, Sibyl and Illidir were just some of the many locomotives which transported the slate. The quarry closed in July 1969, the result of industry decline and difficult slate removal. Today we were on electric power, time to change the story. 
What on earth is this thing humming away at the top of the mountain? That, Christopher, yeah. is a vent for one of Europe's biggest man-made caverns. Uh, quick uh, electricity power lesson. Oh, I'd love one. Go on then, Steve. Okay, what you got? Right. So, top of the mountain, okay, yeah. is, a, is a reservoir called Macklin uh -huh. It holds seven million tonnes of water. Right. That's enough water to fill Wembley Stadium seven times. That's right? a lot of water. That's a lot of water. One million cubic metres, yeah. which is actually 10 gigawatts of stored power. That's like That's insane amount. Yeah. So, what it does, uh, in the daytime, the water drains down from the mm -hmm. top lake, down through this cavern in the mountain, yeah. through uh, pipes and caverns, mm -hmm. Uh, through the valves, the yeah. valves open and close, yeah. through the valves, through the turbines, yeah. in which in turn powers the motors, yeah. delivers power onto the national grid. Power we using done. to charge our e-bikes. Job done, yeah. Nice. So there you go. Thanks for that electricity. Okay, but we need to go down now mm. to the lower lake, right. and that's where the water comes out. Okay. This is dicey, isn't it? What the f are we doing this for? The Dinoric Power Station project began in 1974 and took 10 years to complete. 12 million tonnes of rock had to be removed from within the mountain to make room for 10 miles of tunnels, a million tonnes of concrete and 4,500 tonnes of steel. Today, a Lydiard Mountain, having been munched and crunched for over 200 years, is all very silent today. On the outside, at least, where only it's the rock climbers that the preserve of the mountains taken on the impressive gallery faces. For us, it was an eventful descent. So Chris, Flynn Paris, this is where those seven Wembley stadiums of water end up in the daytime. And in the nighttime, all the water is pumped back up the mountain to Macklin Mow mm -hmm. when the electricity is cheaper and under less demand. Nice. Yeah. It's been a hell of a day here up on the mountain. Wrote some cool lines with you, Steve. Pretty sketchy stuff as well. Big, those big inclines, I think, were my favourite stuff. Mega, weren't they? Yeah, they were Mega. super steep. Yeah. Some sketchy steps, big free ride lines. And all those galleries, Serengeti, yeah. California. Yeah. Honestly, think of the hundreds of people that worked in this quarry. I mean, loads of people died. He's one of the biggest slate mines in yeah. the world. Yeah, it's definitely sketchy, even on a bike today, you know, I'm feeling pretty vulnerable. But going back to some hot climates, if you want to see a video on racing, which we did at the Rock Desert Festival, check out that down there, which we did with Jack. Yeah, and also check out my Trailside Hacks video. We've got that one as well, it's real cool. Check that one out. If you've enjoyed today's video, there's lots more stuff on EMBN, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you liked today's video. Drop us some comments in the box below, and we'll see you in the next one.